So there's a reason why the last time you saw us, the van looked like this. And now it looks like this. But I'll get to that in a second. Thanks for tuning back in to watch us attempt to build our dream off-grid van setup in order for us to live full-time on the road. Well, that's the plan. But until that happens, there's a lot more head scratching and long days that need to be carried out. So it's been a very long time since I've spoke to the camera. This sort of feels a little bit weird, I'm not gonna lie. But we're back. All the boring jobs are now done and taken care of. I completely underestimated how long that stuff would, would take. The painting, the cladding, the sanding, the floor, the insulation, everything like that that comes in it takes so much longer than I thought. And it was tough. <laughs> It was tough. We've kind of just been powering through. It's not been the most enjoyable. We haven't been our best selves. I've been ill twice since doing this build. I'm still getting over a cold now because I think we're just like running ourselves down. Just trying to get it done. We're kind of doing around six days a week working on the van. We've been trying to do the YouTube as well, but that's kind of been pushed into the evenings if we have chance. We've been, uh, yeah, doing like from like half seven to like six nearly every night. And you'd think, wow, they must be done by now. They've been doing so many hours and oh my gosh, so productive. Well, you'd think so too. But uh, there's nothing more humbling than showing people what we've done so far on the van and it looking like we've basically done nothing apart from lay a floor and put up some cladding. But if anyone else knows, you know how much else is underneath there. All the things that take a while, little things that you have to kind of plan in advance. But we're getting there, so that's a positive. And I'm excited to take you along now on this part of the build where more exciting stuff that you can show to people. Hey, we've built a kitchen, or hey, we've built a bench. And it starts to take shape. It starts to look like our little tiny home, which I'm really, really, really excited about as I can start to see light at the end of the tunnel. But we've still got a long way to go but that's where we'll take you along and we'll show you what it's like. Hopefully spirits will remain higher now that we should hopefully start to see more progress each day. Let's get cracking, because I am slacking on the job right now. Might get told off. <laughs> well, since we let you down on the recording front, I'll try my best to recap you on what we managed to get done since the last time we spoke to the camera. Our floor insulation finally arrived. This was the messiest job to date. Cutting the board into all them little squares took quite a while, but was very rewarding once it was done. With that all in, we were able to refit the existing floor and fill the tie down points with scrap plywood. And whilst it was out, Mitch cut the access hole for the shower tray and managed to source some birch plywood for the trapdoor. We decided to go for flexible laminate floorboards as these were self-adhesive and it made them really easy to fit on top. It took us around three days to fit all the battens onto the walls. These are there to fix the furniture to and also our cladding. More cables had been routed throughout the van for various appliances that you'll see as we go on. And then we managed to fit 500 watts of solar onto the roof which we are extremely happy about. It took a good amount of web surfing to source the panels that fit exactly as we needed them but they are sat on top of a unistrut roof rack which saved us spending hundreds of pounds on a custom aluminium rack. Mitch put the stud wall up for our partition wall which will separate our kitchen from the living room area. And now the fun really started. Now, putting up this Tongan groove took forever. We also didn't realise that you can put it on the wrong way round until it was too late. So some of the boards are now stuck on a bit further than the others. We did hate it at first, but now it's painted. It doesn't look too bad. And after endless discussions, we decided on using half of the existing bulkhead and using the other half to template a wooden bulkhead. In the end, this turned out to be a good idea, but it was a nightmare to come to this conclusion. There were plenty of other little jobs that we've probably forgotten about, but if you have any questions about anything I've briefed over, please let us know in the comments. We've also finally picked up, hopefully, the final bits of our lightweight ply that we've been using. We have got a tighter weight limit on this van, so we've been going with all lightweight, although it's a bit more expensive. We're hoping it's gonna pay off in the long run. A bit more expensive. Yeah. This stuff's cost a fortune. It's 
yeah, it's about fifty-five pounds a sheet. A bath, it is. It is. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I'm trying not to make it sound so terrible. Yeah, it's fifty-five pounds a sheet of this ply, and we've had a few already, haven't we? We got some offcuts, and then we went yesterday and picked up five more, four more, four, four more sheets. More. Um, but hopefully now that should take us through to the end of this. We hope, if, as long as Mitch doesn't mess any of it up, because it's an expensive thing to mess up if he cuts wrong. So no pressure there. But it's exciting because now we know that we can just crack on with all the furniture and stuff and we've got the wood. As now that we've got it, it means that the van will be built so we won't be able to pick up any more as it won't fit in. But still, it's exciting because all of that is hopefully going to turn into our furniture. Mind-boggling, I have no idea <laughs> how, but it will. But another thing that we need to start doing as well, not only the furniture, is also fitting the heating and the water and everything like that. So I think Mitch has got a few more holes on the list today to drill in the van, which is always a scary part for me. I've got one to do now, mate. You're going to do one now? Yeah, we need one for the shore power. I need... Because where I'm drilling through to, if I go too far, I'm going to hit this cable. So I need you to tell me, like, when it's through. It's going to be when... That tip comes through. Yeah, well, the tip's going to come through and then the whole saw's going to come through. Okay. I haven't got a lot of room, so you need to tell me, like, if I'm going to hit the... I'll show you. You're going to have to lie on the ground. Okay. Right, so I swear, if I'm not holding things for Mitch, I'm giving pretty scary... Decisions. 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 <laughs> Stop, I'm still nasally. That case, it's the cable that I don't want to hit. It should come down like next to it here. Okay. So you're going to see it come down and then obviously I don't want to hit. The conduit? Yeah. Yep. Is that coming through, Ma? No. Oh, oh wait. That's very close. To what? Yeah, that's fine. I want it to be close, but... No, put your finger in. See, there's a hole coming and it's hot. Let me get underneath it. I'm not going to be able to go through that with the hole saw. That's a shame. Well, I wanted to go through the body with some conduit with this, but it's come out too tight to the wheel arch, so I'm just going to have to go through with that cable. But it's got really thick armour in, so it's not like it's going to cut through it just would have been nicer it's being some conduit but that's the way it is whilst mitch is working on a few bits out of the van i am going to be hopefully sanding this bulkhead wall for the final time this bulkhead piece has probably had six seven coats of paint because i messed one layer up and i put it on too thick and it was an oil based paint instead and yeah we had a few issues but it looks like after another coat yesterday it still needs a little sand um, before I can do the final coat which I think I'll do with a roller riveting um, and you know the worst part about it is is the fact that you'll hardly see any of this because the kitchen will come up we're going to do tiles and then we're going to also cut a hole there to get back into the bulkhead storage. You will still see loads of the paint. Not that, not as much as how much it takes me to paint it. But whatever. I'm just sick of sanding and painting this wall now. Why do I keep losing the tape measure? There's one in the front of the van. Where's this one gone? Oh, wait. Don't tell me you've got it in your pocket. <laughs> Yeah. You're going to be sucked soon. <laughs> so, okay, scratch that. I'm going to be using the machine instead. This bad boy loves to get dust everywhere. And it's really loud. So, I'll try and get this done quickly. Job. I'm pretty sure that I've scribed our wall, bedroom wall, uh, do I, you'll see when it's in, to shape now. And all I'm going to do is I picked up this 
old school router, which I've been after one for ages, just to like make things like this look a bit more professional. And all I'm going to do is router radius on the top of it, just so it's not like sharp when we get into bed. It'll make a bit more sense when I've put it in. God, they're scary, aren't they? They're scary, but to quit. I don't know how to use it at all. I hope this is right, because this took a lot of time. This is probably the tool that has made the biggest difference in professionalism with our build. As you'll see throughout the videos, we use this thing a lot. Putting a chamfer on most of our wood pieces has made such a big difference in the whole look of the van. We picked it up for 50 quid on Facebook Marketplace, and for that price, it was an absolute no-brainer for the difference it has made on our build. Are you happy with it? I think so. I've got to turn it over and do the other side now. Should look a lot better though. Bit of an edge on it. I'll sand that down with a hand sander. Okay. Well, with my hand. <laughs> I'm the hand sander. <laughs> oh. 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 We now have a garage wall slash bed frame wall. It looks, for, it looks really good. For comparison for the height of it though, I mean, I'm small. I'm 5'2", so I don't even know if I'm going to be able to get over. The bed's going to be quite high, but we're going to see what it's going to look like once everything's in. And then we're thinking maybe buying like a black metal step that will go so we can get on. Obviously, we're going to have the, like, benches here anyway so that is like another step up but the benches will be hard for me at all as well so even that's quite high but I've just got some of this leftover paint that my mum and dad had um, that they use in my brother's bedroom and um, that we're gonna use I think uh, on the garage walls and I think I might also do it on the back of this on this side so all the garage is nice and like dark and just different from here because obviously you won't see it once the bed's on. So I think my painting duties are done for the day. I've painted both walls in the back and also primed the back of this garage wall and I think it's looking really good actually. Oh it goes with that. Plastic. Oh yeah. Unintentionally the grey is matched the grey plastic bit that we've got to keep on the back of the doors. Mitch is now just bought in his little bits of wood that he's been working on and we're just starting to get an idea of how mahoosive these chairs are going to be Sick. oh god it's stressing me out basically these are the top straps for the bench so that's how far the bench is going to stick out when the actual like seated piece of ply is on the top because the reason it's got to be so big is because this is where our fridge is going in a drawer that slides out. That bridge. There. So I've basically got to make a drawer system inside of this ply carcass whenever I get able to put it up. But the problem we've just run into is the wall yeah, you can see. obviously bows in because that sits square about there with that gap at the top. So I think I'm gonna have to space that out with another piece of ply and then fix to the battens, which you can see here on the other side, which are exactly the same over there. So, just like little headaches that are like fixable, but you come into because of the bends of the van, which has just been what the, the whole the of the bane build of our been. lives. You like expect the van obviously not to be straight when you buy it and you expect the curves but I don't think you fully expect how many times you're going to run in to the fact that the van bends and curves in different ways like even the cladding when Mitch was just getting the garage wall put up he was saying how like this bit like goes in and this bit comes out just on that little bit of cladding where he's scribing to so it just shows that there is so many things that go into it which is what usually takes the most amount of time but it's coming along so much. I can't believe even just from this morning how much has changed today.
Tell you what, I'm quite impressed with myself. It won't hit that back one. Oh my god, I can't believe we've got a fridge. If I was able to put a spacer between that for the exact distance of that, which looks about 60 mil, then the fridge could sit back that much further, and then you can get into it from here as well. Oh, nice! Like it will look a bit crap because like this will just have a wedge of wood that will like space it out that much. Mm. And then the drawer front will be attached to that. But do you think that that's worth the compromise? Yeah. Can you still get access to both hatches when it's all the way out? Yeah. That would be loads better, wouldn't it? Mm hmm That is so sick though. You should be very proud of yourself. Thank you, thank you. I don't know how that's just worked out that way, like for the fact that that strap literally is the perfect distance away from that. And that wasn't planned. And that wasn't planned. The cape, look, look at this. Look where the, look where the top strap, uh, like for the draw front, like for the draw sits, for the cable entry. Like, <laughs> I didn't mean to do that either. Oh, so tight. What? Yes, it's like so yeah. close. I didn't mean for that gap to make it exactly for that. <laughs> so now that the fridge has been taken care of, we are now moving on to the partition wall which will be going up in the van. So Mitch has got, <laughs> Mitch is like hoovering. Can you see that? It's just, yeah. Yeah, more of the actual structure is going up. Cause I think after we've done this partition wall, we'll then move on to the other sofa bench, right? Yeah, I'd say so. And then it will be the kitchen and then, yeah. No, 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 <laughs> Overhead covers. Anyway, I'm just getting excited because Seems like one thing after the other is just getting ticked off. It's another morning on the van and yesterday we spent half the day editing and then Mitch came down by himself to do a few more jobs and I carried on working on the laptop. And I've just come back in and seen what he's done so far and we've got our partition wall up now. And I think it looks well, really good. Not fully, that's only in by four screws because I've got to cut all the holes out for the what do you even call it? Like, like, a, the, like the centre console thing? I don't know. Yeah, sort of like all of our like sockets, heater control, like light switches, everything is going here above where the kitchen worktop's coming to. And then also we're having an electrical cupboard here, so we're going to have sockets and stuff for the electrical cupboard coming out here. So I've just tacked these in so that I can mark all that up. And we've oh. also, he's also now finished cladding that little bit and then also he's put a ply sheet on that bit now and the, all the water is everything all done now for the water yeah the water tank's all connected up that's the bloody hell it's scratched up that's the feed up to the pump and then that's the fill up point going down to the water tank we did i didn't want to drill too many holes through the van so all we've done is gone straight through the shot well not the chassis well is it the chassis i don't know it's very close to something isn't it well, no, it's just the water tank where the entrance is is really close yeah. to where like a big part of the chassis beam is. So there's a short space for it to come down. I'll go under in a second and show it. But yeah, and then I had to make it because this wall doesn't sit square. So I had to make a ledge for similar to this side for where the ply piece is going to sit on. And it's going to, so this will actually sit square or else it would all be tilted that way. So I had to like square it up with another support button. But yeah, 
it's coming along. It is. It's so nice to come in each day now and actually see something different. I was happened. so scared about how all this scribing was going to go, like for this partition wall, and it's actually like not been too bad. You've done it's, such a good job. Apart from all of the scribe lines that I've been running the pencil up. I mean, this will be covered as well. This yeah. is going to be overhead cupboards coming across here. But you've done a really good job at scribing there. I think it looks really good. And then the trim is now ready to be fitted as well. Yeah, there's like a lot of jobs that can happen now, but it's just trying to pick which one to do at what time. Yeah. Trying to stay out of Martha's way when she's painting. And my job today was just going to be painting, but Mitch also forgot to um, wood fill uh, all the screws last night. So I'm gonna I think I'm gonna do one coat, put some wood fill on tonight, and then because I'll have to sand that first coat down anyway, we'll just sand it then. And I think that's the best way we can work with the time as well so I'm not just sat doing nothing. Although I have scheduled a lunch date with one of my friends today because I'm literally just the painter now. <laughs> so I'm having a little bit of an easier job. But I'm ready to get cracking and see what else we can do by the end of today and see what difference we can make. Our feet are literally going to be like touching there. Oh, we can play footsie. You'll have to like sit that side and I'll have to sit this side. I always sit with my feet up anyway. Yeah, it's it's tighter. It's like a constant battle of like, how much room do you want to take up so that it's like used space? And how much room do you want to give yourself for it to feel spacious? Like this is over half a metre wide, this walkway is, but it's like still feels tight. Like obviously our benches are massive, but that's because we've got to fit the fridge and then the trimmer and the toilet underneath it. So. Personally, I think we've done the right decision here one of the main things when we were first designing this was mitch kept saying every bit of space needs to be used like we don't want just dead space and i think that's what we're doing whilst still also having um enough space to kind of walk around hopefully we get used to it i mean yeah that's a little bit of a walkway but you know one thing i can't wait for what? is when we start putting the videos up how many comments we're going to get of people saying that we've done stuff wrong and then i'm going to be kicking myself for ages yeah, that's the only problem about putting this on the internet because these videos are so far behind when they'll actually go live. There'll be nothing we'll be able to do. Yeah. <laughs> but it's fine. It's our first fun build. So it's a couple of hours later and I've now finished all my painting work for today. And because we start with an oil-based primer, I don't think I'm actually going to be able to get another coat on today. But we'll see. I've just completed this wall this bench sheet here that little bit of cladding and then also this side of the partition wall so I think that will look good Mitch has just been trying to get on with finding the face points for all the electrical points and consoles that we've got and to be honest he's not stopped moaning for some reason he's finding this like a harder job and he keeps saying it's stressful when we've had so many other problems and harder jobs to go on with than this. I hate jobs where you have to think about the future of like where stuff's going to go and like how stuff's going to be because there's like so many what ifs of like oh what if we want to do this what if we want to do that like and it, there's always something that you haven't thought about. So like, look at that, like, that's the new knockout, this isn't used anymore. Like, the 12 volts been moved one, two, three, four, five times. Like, now the 12 volts go in there and there, the sockets, and then the 240s go in there. It's just like, so now that's going like that, and that like that. Cupboard door will be like here, strap for the hinge, like to here. Is that gonna be in the way of that? <laughs> I don't know. Well, I think I'm ready to cut these out now. I don't have to like triple check stuff. What do they say? Yeah, but I never stick to that and then I just make mistakes. <laughs> Measure three times, cut once. Because if I have to rescribe this piece, then I'm going to need therapy.
as I knew that my job load would be a little bit less today, I made sure to tack to pack some extra snacks because when I'm not busy, I just get hungry because I get bored. Some apple and peanut butter, hummus chips. I've already ate a banana and grapes. I've got an orange. And then Mitch's snacks consist of pink panther wafers and loads of chocolate bars. So we're a little bit different on the diet front since we've been home. How much faster it go if like, you could do as much as that? Yeah, I know. This is my first ever manual job, <laughs> like <laughs> ever. So I'm learning a lot. I'm very much an apprentice <laughs> at this. But yeah, if if I was as skilled as Mitch, we'd be we'd be done skilled? by now. Skilled. Uh, well, you've got more sense than I have, especially with all this. I've only I'm still learning spanner and flathead and all that. <laughs> still have no idea. That's hot. Do you feel less stressed yet? No. What's up now? Well, the heating ducts coming through this and the water and two more cables as well, so I've got to drill all the holes for them. Down the bottom. I just don't like drilling holes and stuff. Good morning everyone. We are back again on the job site, although it doesn't look like it because I look the exact same as yesterday, as we're all wearing the same clothes all the time. And we've been working on the van for about an hour and a half so far this morning. And to be fair, it's made some good progress. We have now got some overhead cabinets and they are looking really good. And they're huge. I was wondering if this would be a good place for when we're in the van to, you know, get some shots in the morning, but <laughs> this is where I stand. Maybe if I stand back here, it's, it's an angle, I suppose, but. Yeah, if we were trying to decide if to put a shelf in it because all these overhead cupboards are so big and I just don't want us to have all this storage and then not use it because, you know, we haven't like thought of anything of how to st like stack anything. So I am tempted to get some shelves put in, but I just want to try and- Goodbye. You. <laughs> but I just want to try and think a little bit more about how and what is going to go in here so we don't like make a shelf and then can't fit stuff in so if we do put a shelf in though i'm going to really struggle to reach it like up and back but yeah and then before mitch works on anything else with the other cupboards he will be finishing and taking out this hole for another cupboard. Something I didn't mention in the recap is the shelf that we've made above the cab. We barely recorded any of it because making this template took a long, long time. You can buy these already done, but to save us £150, we decided to have a go at it ourselves. It has been hiding behind the bulkhead this entire time, so we were excited to see how much space it would give us that would have otherwise been wasted. Yeah, man. Now that's all we have time for in this video. It's so exciting to see the van finally start to take shape. Next time it all really starts to come to life. It's a stage in the build where everything seems to happen really quickly. Please remember to subscribe and like the video if you've enjoyed watching and hopefully we'll see you next time.